Hello, my name is Amber and I am a certified yoga instructor at the University of Cincinnati and today we'll be doing a relaxation yoga practice for autumn. So if you've been with me for a while or even taken any live classes with me at the Rec Center, um, you might know that I really like to embrace the seasons. I really believe that everything is a cycle. Um, and I really enjoy sharing seasonal content or um, yoga content inspired by the seasons as they inspire me. Um, so today we're going to be doing a really, really mellow, really chilled out, pretty much all floor work, relaxation yoga practice. So this is going to be great for if you're tired, or you're just kind of feeling a little bit more in hibernation mode, you're wanting to wind down, or you're just maybe feeling sore, and you want a little breaks and some gentle stretches that are going to make me really, really good for your mind and your body. So we're going to come to the mat. Now I do have a lot of props and toys out today, um, but that being said, I don't want that to intimidate or discourage you at all um, because we're going to, uh, I'm going to be showing and using a lot of props today, but I'll also be showing some other variations that don't require the prop. So if you're like, well, I don't have any of this stuff and then I'm going to show you, you know, I, ways that you can get creative options to get creative with this using things that you have but if you really don't have anything to use except for your mat um then stick with me because you'll still be able to um, benefit in practice um what we're doing today so let's um well let's start with what i have out here i have a blanket oh i have my yoga or my socks on right now but i'm gonna actually take them off i suggest you do the same um because we are gonna do a little warm up with like a downward dog i don't want any sweaty to slip and fall um that being said once we finish our downward dog then you will be able to put your socks back on if you'd like for the rest of the practice today on the mat um so i have a blanket i often do like to use a blanket for my practice if nothing else to sit on um, it, you know, you can use a yoga blanket, kind of a typical blanket, yoga style blanket like this, or you may use, um, really any blanket you have, maybe you fold it up or even just a cushion to sit on that can work sometimes, um, instead of a blanket too. If you don't have one, again, it's not a big deal, but I would say if you do have some kind of blanket or pillow to definitely bring that with you to the mat. I also have a bolster. A lot of you um, probably don't have a yoga bolster. Um, this is something that I love. It's one of my favorite props, especially for relaxation and restorative styles of yoga. So it's a big yoga pillow, but again, if you don't have this, a lot of times you can just use a couple of regular pillows as a stand-in for one of these. Which brings me to the next thing I have, which is a couple of big fluffy pillows. So if, pretty much if you have any pillows, just bring as many pillows as you have to the mat today. Like bring all the blankets and pillows. We're going to have a really nice relaxing time. I wasn't joking when I said this was relaxation yoga. Um, so it's going to be like the epitome of that today for us. So I have some, some uh, pillows here as well. I do have my blocks. And again, if you don't have blocks, no big deal. We're, only, we're just going to be using the blocks a little bit today, um, but if you don't have those, a lot of times you can use a pillow or a blanket, or even like, I would say like a big textbook or something can really uh, be a great stand-in for a block. Um, and again, if you don't have any of this, don't worry, um, just hang with us um, and do what you can, and a lot of stuff you'll still be able to do in some variation of. But if you do have these things, it's just going to make the practice even more luxurious, okay? So let's go ahead and get started by finding a comfortable seat. Don't forget to also bring some water with you. Um, we're not going to be doing an intense workout type of practice today, as you may have gathered. Um, but we're still going to be twisting and stretching and moving our bodies in different ways. And of course, it's always a good idea to stay hydrated. And know that you're welcome to take a break at any time. So let's find a comfortable seat. I'm going to sit on my blanket. I find it helps release any pressure or any tension in my spine. And just find a comfortable seat, but make sure that you're sitting up tall. So really sit upright. Maybe draw your navel up and in a little bit. Draw your shoulders back. Relax them down away from your ears so we're not too stiff. Crown of your head lengthens up while your sitting bones root down. Sitting with a nice upright spine, nice posture here. And you 
you can close your eyes if you'd like, or you may keep them open. Now we're just going to start by taking a deep breath in through your nose and just notice any tension, any pressure you might be feeling right now. And exhale, big sigh out through your mouth. <sighs> like you're dumping out that pressure, releasing that tension out with the breath, letting it go. <clears throat> and then from here, we'll move into our steady rhythmic breath for the practice, our four count breath. So just start to gently breathe in and out through your nose. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Breathe in and breathe out. You might even inhale left. Exhale, go if that feels good to you. We're just going to try our best to maintain that steady, even breath as best as you can throughout the practice. But again, remember, there's no pressure here. We're just trying it out. And you stay with this breath. We're going to start to set an intention for the practice. I want to share a little bit of information and inspiration about the autumn season with you. Again, if you're practicing, practicing this in real time, we are it's smack in the middle of the autumn season right now here in um, this part of the world that I'm in, in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, so autumn is the season between summer and winter, comprising in the Northern Hemisphere, usually during the months of September, October, November, or it's reckoned astronomically extending from the autumn equinox to the winter solstice, which doesn't happen until mid-December, um, by the way. It's also referred to as fall. Um, fall is kind of associated with entering a, a more yin phase of the year, which is kind of the style of yoga we're practicing today. It's kind of inspired by yin or restorative yoga practices. Um, if you think of yin and yang, or masculine and feminine, sun and moon, um, Whereas the spring and summer are more young or more like um, sun, you know, um, inspired seasons of the year where we kind of want to go out there and do stuff and make me feel a little more bright, a little more high energy. There's more light. It's less dark. Um, and, you know, in contrast to that, because, you know, everything has to be equal, right? So it balances each other out. It's all how the cycles work. So in contrast to that, um, when we enter the autumn and, and eventually the winter seasons, they're more yin. Um, it's, you know, we have less light. It's more dark outside. It invites us to kind of, um, you know, have that natural instinct to hibernate. So if you're feeling like it's a little harder to get up in the morning right now, or you're feeling like you um, want to just stay inside and cuddle up with some blankets, or maybe feeling a little more like you want to hang out by yourself um, rather than go to like big parties and gatherings, perhaps. Um, try to be okay with that. Um, not to say like don't do anything, obviously, but you know, it's kind of try to lean into that rather than making yourself feel guilty or bad about it because it's all part of the cycle. So it's really a good idea to take that time to slow down to um, turn inward, again, we're entering a dormant phase or yin phase of the year. It's really a time for rest, contemplation, renewal. Uh, so slowing time down, taking that time to reflect on the year so far, um, on achievements and turn inward, um, you know, it just helps us to, to give us the, ourselves that space to rest and renew so that we, when the spring again comes, we enter that more young season, if you will, uh, we feel a little bit more energized and refreshed um, to be able to, you know, to put ourselves out there in those spaces as well. So today's practice, we're going to be including a lot of gentle forward folds to help ourselves to focus inward and feel grounded amidst changes that are going on around us. Um, as well as we're going to be doing fewer poses, but holding them for a longer amount of time uh, to allow for that inward focus and connection. So sitting here, maybe setting that intention for your practice. Maybe it's just allowing yourself space to slow down. Maybe it's taking a break from the hustle and the go, go, go of our society around us and taking time to really, really nourish and take care of you, recognizing that that's going to help you be your best. Maybe it's embracing the, the slowing down of the season, the natural cycle, that hibernation tendency, at least a little bit. Or maybe it's something else that you're feeling like you need to focus on right now. So anyway, if you sit with this breath and intention, we're going to move around a little bit now that I've been talking. Um, go ahead and open your eyes if they're closed.
Stay with that steady, even breath. We're still doing that. Inhale, reach your arms, sweep your arms overhead. Stretch your fingertips up, really lengthen. Exhale, send your left hand down to the floor. Right arm reaches up and over alongside your ear for side body stretch. Try to really keep that left or that right hip rooted down towards the floor. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let it feel good. Inhale, come back up. And exhale, take it to the other side. Breathe in. Breathe out. Letting go. Inhale, come back up again. Exhale, take your hands behind you. Clasp your hands behind your back. And squeeze your shoulder blades together, lifting up through your chest. We're kind of puffing up our chest here. Just coming to a little baby back bend. Inhale. And exhale, release, shake it off, shake it off. And let's roll your shoulders up by your ears. Inhale. Exhale, release them down on your back. Do this a couple more times. Just gentle shoulder rolls here. <sighs> And then just allow your shoulder blades to relax down your back. Inhale, tilt your chin to the ceiling. We'll do this one more move seated here. Try to really keep that upright spine still if you gaze up overhead. Feel stretch through you, the front of your neck. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, your chin to your chest, chest to your chin. Now stretch along the back of your neck. Shoulders are still relaxed down away from your ears. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, just begin to slide your chin. Gently slide it over towards one shoulder. You can kind of pause here, maybe tilt back a little bit more if that feels good to you. Just little head rolls, little half rolls from side to side. Make your way through center. Over to the other side, just take your time. We'll do a few more of these here, just gently releasing pressure in our necks. Nice and easy. There is no rush. I'm keeping the music, I'm keeping it quiet today so that you could just listen to your own thoughts and really turn inward and reflect. But comment down below. I would love to know, do you like the music that I've been putting in the background so these of you? Do you find it distracting? Do you like a mixture of like sometimes having music and then sometimes not? It's always helpful to know. And then eventually in your own time, make your way back through the center. And then from here, come back up to neutral. And from here, we will slide your feet behind you and make your way up to your hands and knees for a tabletop. You can always put something under your knees, put a little extra padding underneath there, blanket or something can work for you. Fingers spread right, shoulders over your wrists, hips over your knees. The flat back will move right into our cat and cow. Inhale, gaze forward, abs relax towards the earth, tailbone points up. Exhale, start to gaze down toward your navel a little bit at a time as your navel draws in towards your spine, tailbone tilt down. For cat, inhale, slide forward into your cow. And exhale into your cat, gentle warm up movements for your spine. Just move at your own pace, with your own breath. We're not trying to prove anything today. We're just trying to take really good care of ourselves. And one more cat here. And make your way back to your tabletop, back to your hands and knees. And this is the one where you want to have bare feet. We're going to take your palms, elbows wide as your shoulders, fingers spread wide. Curl your toes under and lift your hips up to the sky, finding a downward facing dog. And this is the only downward dog we're going to do today. So this is going to be a pretty uh, mellow practice. So, you know, if you want, you can kind of walk the dog a little bit and shake your head loose. If you want to lift one leg back. If you want a little more action here, you can kind of play around with that. You can really make it what you want it to be here. Take a couple more breaths here. Take one more breath in. And exhale. Lower it back down. I'm going to slide my blanket here out of the way. You can remove your socks now if you want, or you could, sorry, remove. You can put your socks back on now if you want. I'm going to take a moment to do that, so I'm going to encourage you to take a moment too, if that would help you feel more comfortable. 
We're getting real cozy today. So come back to your tabletop if you're not there already. From here, we'll sink your seat to your heels. Oh, blossom a child's pose. Knees can be close together or apart. I'm going to show a few variations here. So if you don't have any props, that's fine. You can stay here. And you stretch your arms out. You can feel a really nice stretch through your shoulders and your upper back. Or if you want, you can kind of make your own prop by forming a pillow with your hands and just resting your head on your hands. Anything like that works. If you're someone who finds it challenging to get close to the floor in child's pose, or maybe finds the pose to be uncomfortable to you for that reason, a block or some similar object can help. You can use the block to kind of bring the floor up to you a little bit and then come down to your on your forearms and just rest your head on the block. Whatever variation here. Again, or book or whatever, if that makes the pose feel more accessible to you. Another option, and this is this is the one, uh, this is my favorite one, is I'm gonna grab my bolster. Now I could also, if I didn't have my bolster, I could grab these two pillows and stack them. It'll work in a very, very similar way. I'm going to use my bolster because I do have it here. Otherwise, you can stack two pillows if you want to try this out. They're super nice if you can do this. And, and from here, you just come down onto the bolster. Just rest your chin to one side and surrender. Either way, wherever you're at here, just try to surrender into the pose. We're going to stay here for a good three minutes or so and just pause on our child's pose. You might feel an inkling to get bored or feel like you want to move around more, but I think you so just let this be sort of a more meditative mellow practice so it is and to see the value in that you're really getting that stretch in your back you're really getting the benefits of this pose um because from holding it longer so you can kind of feel your practice in different ways depending on if you're flowing from form to form if you're focusing on one pose at a time or if you're holding postures and they all have benefits they all have their own benefits so i just encourage you to be open to this of course if a pose starts to hurt or feel uncomfortable definitely come out of it know that you can always come out of a pose sooner than i suggest if it doesn't feel right to you continue to breathe in breathe out and blossom out of child's pose which reduces internal distractions Helps to quiet the mind, provides a gentle and passive stretch for your back and shoulders. Just let yourself sink into completely surrender here, into the pose, onto the floor, your props that you might be using. Continue, steady, even breath. And just let yourself be. Now at this time, we have a couple more minutes left here. I'm just going to give you some space for your own quiet reflection. Maybe coming back to your intention, if that feels good to you. Or anything else you feel like you need here. And maybe just giving yourself the space to slow down, to just be and just embrace Kind of fall in love with the stillness of the moment. Embrace the not being expected or not needing to be running off and doing something right now. That you can just take this time right now just to be uh, and take this time to take care of yourself. Less than a minute left here. Maybe see if you can relax even deeper.
and take just a couple more easy breaths here. In the press down through the palms of your hands and lift yourself back up to the tabletop. You can move any props or anything that you might have used just off the side out of your way. And just take a few moments here to make any little stretches or movements that might be feeling good to you here. There's no there aren't any specific rules here for what this has to look like. Just anything, whatever your body is asking for right now release from that first pose that we really held for a longer amount of time. And then eventually we'll meet up in our tabletop. And from here just slide your feet over to one side. So it doesn't matter which side it is. So we're going to come back to a seat, kind of like where we started, but we're going to come into a different kind of pose from here. So here, come to a seat if you get if you have a blanket or pillow to sit on. I'm gonna highly recommend it because we're gonna come into a supported seated forward fold. Um, and so having something to kind of elevate your hips a little bit can give you a little more space and ease when coming into coming forward into a forward fold. So from here, I'm gonna extend my legs out in front. So stretch your legs out in front of you. Now, if you have it available to you. You want to grab something, either a bolster or some blankets or pillows, something to place under your knees, something kind of big to place under your knees to help um, release tension from your hamstrings. Kind of unplug that. I'm going to grab my two pillows that I stacked up here because I know that seems to, to work out okay. Otherwise, sometimes what I'll do is take another yoga blanket, which I don't have right now, and roll it up into like a cylinder shape and slide it underneath my knees. My bolster would work here as well, but I'm going to use that for something else in this pose. Um, if you don't have anything, what you can do instead is just put a little bend in your knees. So you would just sit without that, legs extended, and then just put, you don't have to completely bend your knees, but just put a little bend in your knees, or maybe even do bend your knees more, and just see how it feels, see how it goes for you. Um, if you're like me and you have tight hamstrings, you're going to find one of these options to be very helpful um, so that you can get in this pose and still feel comfortable. So from here, I'm going to grab my bolster. Some of you might be looking at this like, oh my gosh, she's going to keep grabbing more things. And that is true because I am. But again, there's going to be an option if you don't have it. So bolster across my lap. If you don't have one, maybe you put a blanket or pillow here, or maybe you put nothing. And um, you'll do a variation that way. But for now, I'm going to put my bolster here. I'm going to put a block on top of it. The block is kind of optional, but the thing is when we come forward, sometimes we can kind of end up straining our neck, bringing our head all the way down. And if we're holding the pose, that can start to really create some discomfort in our neck. So having this block underneath, what that's going to do is you place it underneath your forehead. That's just going to kind of help keep your neck a little bit, feel a little more level so that you're not um, cranking it one way or another too much. So from here, hang with me. I'm going to show some options, but let's take your hands to the floor beside your body. Press your fingers and fingertips into the floor. You can really lengthen up, lengthen the spine, lengthen up through the crown of your head, sit up as tall as you can. And then from here, exhale a little bit of time. We'll bring your arms forward, start to fold over your lap, whether it's over bolster or props or, or what have you. Ideally, a perfect row, you have a bolster and a block here. You're resting your forehead on the block and you are either placing your hands in front of a block like this or maybe you're stretching them out in front of you to enhance the um, forward fold here. Other option is if you don't have these things, maybe you have something underneath your knees, okay? Or maybe you just have your knees bent. You would inhale, sit up tall, lengthen your spine like we just did. And I just a little bit of time start to fold over, but maybe, you know, don't worry about coming as far as you possibly can because we're going to hold this, um, maybe not quite as long as the last pose, but for, for a minute or two here. So, just take your time to find that space. And this is called Caterpillar Pose. Okay, we're going to stay here just for about a minute or so today. We won't, we won't hold this one quite as long. <coughs> 
Mm. And then I suppose the idea here is we're really going inward. Take this time to just kind of shelter yourself from the rest of the world a little bit and rest in the pose. Kind of like you're going into your cocoon, like a caterpillar, going into your hibernation, into your restorative growth season. So then potentially in the spring, you come out and emerge as a beautiful butterfly. And we're always doing that through different cycles that help us to enhance our, our personal growth. We're not stagnant, we're not always staying the same. We're always moving through different chapters, different phases, different cycles. But let's take a couple more breaths here. Inhale, starting with your head, you start to lift your head up a little bit at a time and then start to come back into your upright spine, neutral spine seat. And then from there, if you have props, just start to unbury yourself from props, okay? Get those to the side. And if you have something under your knees, we'll slide that out from underneath there. And just take a few moments here to make any movements that feel good to you, maybe stretch or shake your legs. Maybe do a little mini twist from side to side, or shake your head yes, shake your head no, whatever feels good to you. Okay, and then we're gonna um, clear some space on our mat for a moment. So set all your props, any props you might have used, if you if you have them off the side, scoot off of your blanket. And come to a seat with your knees bent in front of you and your feet on the floor. I'm gonna grab my bolster again, but if you want, you could. I could easily do this with these stacked pillows that I, I have here as well. So either a stack of pillows or a bolster, but you wanna make sure that the pillows are, um, you might wanna have like two or three of them. I'm gonna show a variation of this that is without any pillows or bolsters as well. But I'll show this first. So if you have a bolster, we're gonna place it right behind you at the base of your spine. Or if you have like two or three, Pillow, did you see how high up this comes? You want to make sure it comes up about that high so that you have plenty of support for this um, supported back bend that we're going into. If you go too far with it, it might, you're just going to go into, you're already going a deep back bend. You might go into like even a super deep back bend and it may or may not feel good. So as we go into this pose, just lower into it slowly. Make sure you don't have any pinching or pain in your spine, okay? Um, so, I'm going to grab my blanket and place it at the top section of my bolster. I find that it um, gives a little support to my head and neck. And then, with your knees bent in front of you, your feet on the floor, slide your knees out the side, bring your soles of your feet together. If you don't have any other props, I would say grab something. I'm going to use my blocks, but you could always use like some pillows or a blanket or anything you have. Just something underneath your knees to stabilize them, to close out any space between your knees and the floor. Inhale, if you sit up tall, lengthen your spine. You can just watch if you don't have these props too, because I'm going to be demonstrating another option as well in a moment. Or you can do this with me. And then exhale, slowly lower, a little bit of time lower, all the way down onto your back, onto the bolster. Again, make sure this feels okay on your back. If it doesn't come out of the pose, it's not worth it. I'm going to show another variation in a minute. Or see if you can lift this up a little more at an angle um, to make sure that you're comfortable. Otherwise, just let your shoulders relax down if this feels good to you. Let your arms rest to the side. And we're moving into one of my all-time favorite restorative yoga poses, our Supta Baddha Konasana, or reclined bound angle pose. relax into it. Now again, if you don't have the props, then what you're going to do instead, I'll remove this bolster here. If you at least can put something under your knees, that is really good to be able to do. If not, you might just not hold the pose as long, okay? So that's fine too. Um, you don't have to have any props to do this pose. But if you can have something under your knees, that's nice. So have your knees out to the side like we, like we have before, like we did in the other variation of this pose. Inhale, set up tall, lengthen your spine, 
and then exhale just a little bit at a time slowly lower down onto a flat back you're not going to get the back bend here but this is still going to feel it still feel really good this kind of reminds me of vacation okay <laughs> and you're still going to get that opening your hands that's stretching your inner thigh you can either take your arms off to the side here or what i like to do in this option if i don't if i'm just laying on my back to stretch my arms back behind me so whatever feels good to you it's just another variation of our supta balakonasana Still a very refreshing, very restorative type of pose. Now we're going to stay in this one for a few minutes today because I just find it so helpful. Um, especially the, the one with the bolster can, has especially helped me personally with um, back pain. And especially if you're feeling any pain in your lower back, it can really help. Just let yourself sink into the floor, release into the pose. Stay with your steady, even breath. Perhaps come back to your intention, letting everything go, coming back to that, slowing down, slowing to a stillness. Just take your time. Now this is time for you to just be, just relax. Remember, we are human beings, not human doings. We don't always have to rush around to be valuable and to have worth. Notice any subtle releases or stretches you might be feeling on your body here. Just relax into it. shoulders relaxed and let your eyes close if you'd like inhale two three four exhale two three four breathe in breathe out and let your heart be open to embracing who you really are and nurturing yourself and what you really need. Take a couple more gentle breaths here. Finding that place of ease, that place of stillness where all the pushing, all the pressure, all the tension just disappears. We can come back to our natural state of equanimity, peace of well-being. And as you're ready, if your eyes are closed, you may gently open them. We'll bring, um, go ahead and bring your knees back together. You know, you know, if you're lying on the back, you can just kind of roll over one side and then use your hand to lift yourself up. If you're lying on your back with a bolster or some pillows underneath you, I want you to really take your time because you'll be coming out of a pretty deep back bend. So just honor your body as you release the pose. So you can slide your knees over to one side and just take your time here coming up to a seat for just a moment and we'll slide bolsters, pillows, anything from underneath you out of the way so you can lower back down onto your back gently and then we'll just everyone give your knees a hug into your chest and rock a little from side to side. I find that this kind of thing can feel really, really nice when coming out of a back bend or a pose like that. Even if you didn't really do the back bend part and you were just lying flat on your back, it's still going to feel really good, most likely. Kind of using the floor to kind of knead on or massage on your spine. And then from here, let your knees roll over to the left side and send your right hand or arm over to the side, coming to a little 
Recline twist, maybe you look out over your right shoulder if that feels good to you. If it bothers your neck, then don't go there. Coming into a recline twist, we'll just take about five breaths here. And let it feel good. Notice any release you might feel out in your back. Notice how these re releasing the pressure in your body can also help release the pressure in your mind. <sighs> yourself be comfortable if there's ever a time to get comfortable and cozy i think like it's really like the fall is is a great time for that winter too but the fall it just we're surrounded by these earthy colors the changing colors on the leaves the brisk air we can still go outside a little bit and it just really invites um kind of a, a feeling of contentment or well-being just bring your knees back to center. I'm going to rock a little bit more for a sec here and then slide them over to the right. I like to place a hand, you know, maybe on top of the knees to support it. Slide your left arm out to the side. Please put a blanket or something underneath your um, left shoulder if it doesn't touch the floor. I'm just going to take five breaths or so here and breathe in. And breathe out. Let your back release here. Of course, if you have any injuries for any reason this or anything else we're doing today doesn't feel good to you, you can always just kind of practice watch asana and just kind of like watch me do it or skip to the next part or just lie down on your back and focus on your breath. We have a couple breaths left here, I think. <coughs> and now bring your knees back to center again. Hug them in toward your chest one more time. Rock a little bit from side to side. Then take your hands to the backs of your legs. Extend your feet toward the ceiling for a moment. Point and flex your feet, stretching them out a little bit too. Take one more breath in here. And one more breath out. And then bring your knees back in and lower your feet down to the floor and start to stretch your legs out in front of you and take your time to get comfortable. We're going to do a little bit of a longer meditative Shavasana today. So you can either come to a comfortable seat if you'd rather be seated for this part or lie down on your back if you want to get super cozy and feeling really luxurious and relaxed. But we're going to do a, um, we're, I'm going to be incorporating a meditation practice exercise for fall into our Shavasana today. So get really cozy, really comfortable. So if you don't put anything warmer on, definitely take a moment to do that. If you do have props around you, blankets, pillows and stuff, definitely feel free to um, use those to your advantage to get as comfortable as you can. Maybe put something in a blanket or pillow or something underneath your knees if you get any tension in your back when you're lying down. Maybe pillow or something under your head to support your neck if you want to do that. Or maybe nothing at all again is fine too. But just try to get as relaxed and comfortable as you can and just take your time to make any other movements or adjustments to get there. And when you do get there just try to let your back your shoulders relax into the floor as you move into this place of stillness. Not that you can't move. If you fidget a little or anything a little bit, don't stress about it. It's fine. But we're generally embracing more of a stillness. So all the movements kind of slow down until we come into a place of stillness here. Let your eyes gently close as you return back to your natural breath. And just really let yourself, let everything go, release all physical efforts from your body. Just let yourself completely, completely relax as you gently sink into the floor here for this Shavasana and meditation practice. You can stay there and just stay lying down or if you chose a seat, that's fine as well. And choose what feels most right to you and trust yourself that you know what that is.
So now we're going to be moving into just a very simple little meditative exercise that I personally find helpful in just a moment. <coughs> so we get to begin this. Just follow your natural breath and be aware of the gentle rise and fall of your lower abdomen with each in and out breath. Now bring your awareness to any in all thoughts that arise in your mind. Just notice any thoughts that come into your mind without any judgment. Just notice any thoughts that come into your mind. Now begin to place each thought on a leaf and watch it flow by on a stream. You may picture colorful leaves in your mind, green, yellow, orange, red. Picture the colorful leaves and any thoughts that enter your mind can be observed one after another and let go of by simply placing each thought on a leaf and watching it float by. I'm ready to continue this practice for a few more moments here. If you are finding this practice helpful and you want to stay in this meditation longer, you can always pause the video and continue practicing this exercise. Otherwise, once you're ready, you can start to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, and get little movements that feel good to you, starting to reawaken your body. Maybe you start to deepen your breath, bringing awareness back out into the rest of the room, the rest of your day, the rest of the world. And eventually, maybe you stretch your body along as if it were the first of the day. And whenever you're ready, just gently bring your knees back in towards your chest once again. And roll over onto your right side and just pause for a moment here in your fetal pose. Autumn is a second spring when every leaf is a flower. Albert Camus. And then mindfully begin to make your way back up to your seat. And as you do so, just take a brief moment here of gratitude towards yourself for taking this time to really, really honor and take care of you, to slow down, give yourself permission to come to the mat for this relaxation yoga and meditation practice honoring the autumn season. Let's bring your hands to our hearts for a moment and bow our head. Thank you so much for joining me for this practice today. Namaste. I do hope you found that helpful. If you'd like to see more for other seasons, um, let me know in the comments as well. It's also that question I asked about the music preferences. It doesn't hurt my feelings either way. It's just helpful to know um, so I can kind of know how to provide value and what kind of videos you guys like to see. Um, if there's any other kind of stuff you'd like to see me do on here as far as like relaxation yoga or um, gentle yoga, even gentle flows or um, beginner's yoga, anything along those lines, because that's kind of what I've been asked to do on here, um, definitely look comment below and let me know and I will take that into consideration. But thank you so much for joining me. As always, take really good care of yourself and I will see you next time. Bye.